One of the most important laws in classical physics is Newton's law of universal gravitation. Now, this law describes things like, why does an object fall when you release it? Now, we can describe this law using the following statement. Any two particles with mass will exert an attractive force on one another that is proportional to the masses of these two objects and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their center of mass. So, let's suppose we have object 1 with mass 1 and object 2 with mass 2 and they're separated their distance between the center of mass of these two objects is r. Now we can use the following formula to solve for our magnitude of the force and it's given by g times mass 1 times mass 2 divided by the distance between them squared. So mass 1 is simply the mass of object 1, mass 2 is simply the mass of object 2, both given in kilograms. G is simply our gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to negative 11, newtons times meter squared divided by kilogram squared, and this is our distance between their center of masses, and we square that, and the distance is given in meters. Now, what exactly is our direction of the force? Well, if we examine our mass 2 and our mass 1 exerts an attractive force on mass 2, this force will point towards mass 1 from mass 2 and will lie along the axis that connects these two masses, their center of masses. Likewise, the force that acts on mass 1 due to mass 2 will point in the opposite direction, will lie along the same axis, but will point in the opposite direction and will have the same exact magnitude. Now, let's look at the following example. Suppose two people with equal mass of 80 kilograms stand 50 centimeters apart. We want to determine the gravitational force they exert on one another. So once again, the magnitude is given by this equation, but our directions are exactly opposite. So if I was standing here and a second person was standing 50 centimeters away, I would attract that person while that person would attract me with the same exact magnitude of force. So, first we must realize that 50 centimeters is 0.5 meters and now we simply use our equation, we plug in our values as shown here, so we have our constant multiplied by the mass of both objects, so 80 kilograms squared, divided by 0.5 meters squared, and we get the following force, 1.71 times 10 to negative 6. So note that this is a very tiny force, and that's exactly why if a second person stands, 50 centimeters away, I don't actually feel any force because it's very, very, very small. So even though the force exists, it's very small and we don't actually feel. And in fact, any two objects that have mass will exert a force on one another. And in fact, that's exactly why a marker falls when you let go. It falls because the Earth has such a large mass that my object actually begins to accelerate. It actually accelerates and it feels that pull. Now, let's suppose we have the following object, mass 1, and now we have not one mass, but two masses uh, lying along the same axis. Let's suppose I want to calculate the force that mass 1 feels due to these two masses. Well, now because I have more than one mass, and because force is a vector, that means to find my net force on this object on mass 1, I simply sum up the two forces acting on mass 1. So uh, one force is acting due to mass 2, shown in green, and the second force is acting due to mass 3, shown in red. So to find the sum of the forces, I simply add up my two forces. So let's look at another example. Let's suppose I have 
three masses, an equal distance apart, so one meter apart, and each mass has a mass of one kilogram. Each object has a mass of one kilogram. So we want to find what is the net force on mass one and what is the net force on mass two. So let's begin with A. So what is the net force on mass one? Well, we have mass one, we have one, two objects. One object is one meter apart and the second object is two meters apart because one plus one is two. So we simply sum up all the forces acting on mass one. So we have one force and a second force due to each of these objects. So the sum of the forces acting on mass one is equal to the force acting on object one due to object two plus the force acting on object one due to object three. So we simply use our formulas, we plug in our values and we get approximately 6.67 times 10 to the negative seven newtons. What about the net force on object two? Well, let's look at object two. Here we have a relatively simple situation because this object lies along the same axis as these two objects, and these two objects are the same distance from the middle object. So that means this force will pull an object two in this direction along the positive x-axis, and this object will pull our object number two along the negative x-axis. And so these two forces will exactly cancel one another out because the distance is the same and the masses are the same. So here we have our picture. We have mass two being pulled in one direction by mass three and in the opposite direction by mass one. So we have the sum of all the forces acting on object two, our mass two is equal to zero.